The frequent power outages has caused much displeased with many residents on the island, especially those on the southern side. New Power Corporation electrical engineer Paul Johnson said today the problem has been identified more than 18 months ago and it needs to be fixed. It is all controlled from Tuila and it's on what we call the southern feeder. So the southern feeder runs from Tuila right through to Hakupu and then comes back up through here to Hui Hui and round to the quarry. So anything that uh, uh, happens on the lines or the network in that area trips off and at Tuila and everybody goes down with it and is affected. How long has this um, started? Well, the problem's been with us for two or three months. It's been getting progressively worse. The real problem has been that it does not stay there as a fault. Normally a fault goes on and it stays and you can then test and find out where it is, isolate the fault and fix the problem. But this uh, has been clearing and we put the power back on and everything's good for a few days, sometimes a few hours, sometimes until it rains. So very difficult to find, very difficult to what we call nail up and get fixed, um, but we've finally tracked it down to this two-pole structure here where the problem has been. So, so when, you, when you talk about the problem, is it the transformer or is it the wire, is it the cable? Well, what happens here is that these two poles are in a very poor state of repair and they are slowly leaning over. Um, probably they've, they've got around six months left before they finally fall onto the ground. As they've been leaning over, the clearances up the top of the pole have been changing and the wires have been starting to contact the pole. And once the wires contact the pole, then we detect that as a fault and the system turns off to protect itself. Okay, so now that you um, identified what the fault is, what the problem is, is there any uh, plans to get it fixed in, like before six months? Because you, you know, you're saying that uh, perhaps in six months it will be all trouble. Well, the, it, there's certainly it, it has to be done. Um, it's not my call as to who does it or how they do it. Uh, it's been on the books for around 18 months to two years to replace these two poles. Um, but maybe there's not a budget or whatever. You'd have to talk to somebody, you know, perhaps like Speedo, who knows what his plans are to have this sort of work done. So. Um, if I, if I was the manager and the engineer, I'd have them done tomorrow because it's something you cannot just leave it. It's going to fall down, and the sooner it's repaired, the better. 18 months, it's the world to do it. If it's that important for newer power to do it, shouldn't they be doing it? Well, today? that's a question you would have to address to them. Um, I'm just the engineer. I make advice and, and recommendations, which I've done since I've been here, on this and other matters. Uh, so maintenance is never a very fashionable item on a budget sheet, and it's not a very nice thing to have to do maintenance, so we tend to forget it. But eventually it catches up, and this, these two poles here have definitely gone past their use-by date. They need to be fixed real quick. What is your advice for people? I, I know, like, with the power outage frequently going off, uh, what is your advice in regards to the appliances? It's always the same, and it applies really anywhere. Uh, not only on new A, and that is to turn things off at the wall. Don't leave things switched on. If you've got an automatic washing machine and it's finished its cycle, switch it off at the wall. Don't leave it sitting with the mains operating. Same with your TV. Don't turn it off on the TV button. Turn it off at the wall. Then if there are any sparks or other issues that come down the line through lightning or failures or whatever, then it doesn't get into the TV and upset things. With new power operational management unable to comment as to the problem, or when the problem will be solved, the continuation of a power disruptions is still likely till the two electrical poles topple. Another problem last night, the northern side of the island experienced what the southern side has had to put up with. We'll bring you more on this story in our future news bulletin. The bail condition for a man from Alufi North who was imprisoned on Monday this week for two arson attacks in Hikutamaki has been set. Mr Ian Hipper has been remanded on bail until March 2012 when the Niue High Court presides. Chief Register of the Niue High Court, Justin Kamupala, imposed bail after discussions and considerations with Chief Justice Patrick Savage and yesterday bail conditions were established including a curfew and not to approach Hikitabaki. Mr Kamupala said there were many factors into, taken into account before a decision was made to establish bail, including the Christmas season, 
the fact that the person charged also had his house burned to the ground and his wife fearful for their lives. The terms of which the charge for arson is liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding five years. No monetary bail was given and the case is due before the new High Court in March 2012. The police who charged the suspect have yet to confirm how the charges lead to arson. They said they will continue to hunt those responsible and the suspects in this case will not be restricted to Hiktawaki, but other areas around the island and they will work to identify the culprits. Newer police have not established the conclusion of the charge as no official statement has been signed by the person charged with the arson attack. The proprietor of the business house in the community hall that also burned said he is sad the incident happened but his business will reopen in a new venue. As many proposed salary increase public servants rushed to the bank for a confirmation of their accounts on Tuesday, those in the know were also trying to calculate their figures. But it was not to be as the amended bill in the House last week to approve the increase has yet to action. The substantial increase has posed questions of how it actually works, with talks of the increase is not as simple as first thought. With the new public service gearing up for the change, a clarification will be advised next week and hopefully a confirmation of when the increase will action. But spare a thought for the pensioners who are also anxiously awaiting as official confirmations received today. It is likely to change in a couple of weeks, just before Christmas for the pensioners. Learning of operational systems and those implementing projects of government and private sector was taken on board by students of New High School this week as 25 students embraced the chance to investigate areas of interest. Most of the students were broken up into groups who, who utilized two days of school to visit different departments and a private business and ascertain what actually happens within different sectors. Five businesses were visited by the groups Newer Power Corporation, BCN, METS, Kilocuts Production and Bulk Fuel. Broadcasting Corporation received two groups of students with some enthusiastic responses and some more interested on what their counterparts think of the experience. We asked one of the students from the group what he thought of the tour. I reckon it's good that they know what they're doing and everything, and what they do, and what their job is, and everything. Do you think that uh, that they should continue with this program? Do you think it benefits you, you as a student? Mm, yeah, it mm, teaches us about how hard it is and how, how difficult stuff are to do and everything. Needless to say, a couple of future news readers are among the group. And today also they had a continuation with a program of dancing at the high school. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, a topic that brought many inquiries to the newsroom lately are the aluminium cans that have increased in numbers. A representative from the group responsible for the business said today they have re just received funding to start. Unfortunately, it is too late to begin. It is only two more weeks before Christmas that will mean a halt to the operation and the group would like to have a fresh start in January, likely to be after prayer week. Most can collectors will certainly welcome the news to rid of the unwanted cans. That's our news bulletin for this evening. Good night.